we want to welcome everybody on behalf of Marlboro County Council. Uh, this is a, a happy event. We love to get together for things like this, and you couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day. Uh, so we're really fortunate, and even the pollen's down a little bit. So we're here today to uh, have our ribbon cutting of this new this facility that we've been working on for uh, some time now, and more importantly, a dedication of the facility, uh, naming it after Wade H. Prince. Uh, Mr. Prince was an educator, a longtime educator, who had a very positive impact on the children here in the county and particularly in the Blenheim area. So today we'll hear some brief remarks from folks that, uh, that knew him and can speak to uh, that positive impact. But as always, we need to start with a prayer and ask that Reverend James Brown come up and give our invocation. Our Father, we die always and eternal mercy. Who loved the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son to die in that world. That he will resurrect that we may have life, have more abundance. We thank you, uh, Heavenly Father, that you allow us to come and witness the really cut it and dedicate it of uh, the Reparation Center. Uh, we pray, God, that you continue to support uh, this Reparation. We pray, God, that that's uh, committed. Give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And we have prayed that the Father bless our leader. Bless them with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our young children. And God lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, I just want to try to introduce a few folks. And I'll, I'm sure I'll miss somebody. So uh, raise your hand if I... We think it should have been introduced, but uh, I see Representative Hennigan's here. We, we're glad to see you here. Um, I saw uh, Chairman uh, Neil was here. Where is he? Raise your hand. Oh, he's hiding. Okay, there he is. Okay. Are there any other school board members here? I see one there. Uh, Reverend James Smith. Anybody else? I'm always afraid of doing this because I'm going to leave somebody out. Uh, county council people, I know I see uh, Mr. Gladden, Ms. Plato, um, Mr. Odom, Mr. Blackman, who else is here? You guys raise your hand. A couple of them, a couple of them here. And of course, Dr. Friends, our chairman. Let's give them a hand. Uh, Mayor Brock, I saw you. There you are. We welcome you. And we're in your territory, so we appreciate you giving us a pass to come down here. Um, Mayor Clyde. What's that? Mayor Clyde. Oh, is Mayor Clyde here? Yeah. Yeah. There he is. Hey, man. Good to see you. Who else? Who am I leaving? I know I'm leaving someone out. Who am I leaving out? Tyrone Abraham. Is he? Where? Any other city council people? Yeah. Oh, hey. 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 And Gene Quick back here. They're everywhere. We got the new newly elected auditor, Deborah Weldon. Okay, that's enough, right? <laughs> but we welcome all of you. You're all dignitaries to us, but uh, we always try to recognize some of these elected officials. Uh, it's a thankless job, and we appreciate what you do to represent us uh, here in the county. Uh, we'll move right along. I'm kind of the MC, so we'll move along on the program. And first up, we have Dr. Uh, Dixon Coe, who will uh, give some brief remarks. is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let Amen. us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Truly it is an honor for me to stand before you today, all of our distinguished guests. Today is of course the dedication of ribbon cutting to officially establish this facility as the Wade Camp Prince Recreation Center. We have stopped today to honor and to indi individually give honor to one who has proven to be one of our most respected educators and administrators. But if you think of who he was and where we are standing today, you know that today is much more than a river cup. It is a lifting up 
of memories and renewing of life. Oh yes, the life of a facility that Wade H. Prince thought so much of, and many of us who are here today hold such cherishable memories. This is a celebration of the life that this building once had and will now continue to exhibit in the development of our children, adults, and seniors. The floors that were immaculate will again shine. The voices that roam the hallways will again be heard. And the physical, emotional, so social, and cultural growth of this community will again thrive. So we thank our county council, all of our officials and community leaders. For today we honor a great man, father and leader, as we memorialize the hard work and sacrifice he made to this school, his faculty and staff, the students and parents of this community. We thank you and we thank you Wade Frank. Thank you. Uh, we have several folks that will make remarks talking about uh, Mr. Prince and his impact he had here in, in, in the schools and in the community. The first up is uh, Steve Blackman, who's the county councilman for this year. I'd just like to thank all council members for helping us put this together. Everybody was right along with us, and you know, we thank them for getting this come together. And I can think of a better person to dedicate this to. Uh, I think of principles. Uh, Mr. Prince comes to my mind automatically. I was, when I was at elementary school, uh, he was my principal. And I'll tell you one thing, you're going to tie to you. <laughs> yes, sir. If I remember what he wanted you to, uh, I'll tell you, uh, if I do remember things about him, such as the school was old then, but it was clean. I guarantee you, you wasn't down a cleaner school. It was the old school, but it was still clean. He kept the hallways clean. He kept the good from the teachers, to the custodians, to the students. He was on top of things. Tell you, uh, he'd be a hard example to, to follow. Um, I've always had respect for him, and um, even the times he got on me, I realized that uh, afterwards he was sure he thought something of me. And uh, I wish he were here today to see that it turned out okay. You know, <laughs> and, uh, I know everybody had his doubts during the time of the day. Anyway, I just uh, I'm honored to be here. Like I said, if we uh, had more like him, uh, schools would be just better, safer. Um, he had the tough part to him, but he also had a heart too. I mean, when he went to him, uh, he hit him. He, he knew more about what was going on in the community than people thought he did. And he always had to hit the ball. But anyway, I thank you. Next we have uh, Mrs. Claudette D. Hooker, who is chairman of the Wright School Alumni Association. It made you walk, I'm sorry. You were right there a minute ago until I moved the podium. God bless you. And I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity to honor one of the great icons from my past. As a coach, a teacher, and principal of Wright High School, Mr. Wade H. Prince was a great model to the children and the adults in the Blenheim community. Having been a student at the Wright High School during his tenure, I had a great admiration for him. He took on the role of a leader, father, teacher, and principal of the students. As a father, he taught us the value of earning a honest, an honest living, working hard, and giving respect to our peers, our parents, and our teachers. As a leader, he taught us what it meant to be <coughs> aggressive 
at confidence, not to let anything hold us back. As a teacher, he taught us the value of following and obeying the rules of society. As a principal, he taught us discipline. Mr. Prince was a strict disciplinarian because he realized that as black children living in our culture at that time, there were obstacles in our society wherein the least mistake would have de destined us to a life of torture and pain. But with his guidance, his concern, his love, and God's help, we were able to finish school, get jobs, and become reliable and moral citizens. Yes, I am honored to speak about a man who showed more young boys and girls how to become outstanding citizens, how to make a future for themselves, and how to live a life that we would one day be proud to share with others. Mr. Prince was a man with commitment. It was important that the children learn what he was ta teaching. He taught with compassion and authority. He was a man with ambition. As a coach, he wanted his team to win, but win with dignity. He was a man with character. He insisted that the young ladies respected themselves and that the young men respected the young ladies. He was a man with moralistic value. Parents did not have to worry about their children going to academic and athletic activities with him because they knew he would be safe. They would be safe. Yes, Mr. Wade Hampton Prince was a proud, moralistic, dedicated man. And I am proud to say that I am a recipient of his tenure as the principal of Wright High School. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share the history of a man who dedicated so much of his time to the, the success of the children at Wright High School and the Blenheim community. Thank you. And Carolyn, you should be very proud of your father. At this time, I'm going to ask all those who attended or taught at Wright High School, please stand and wave your hand if you're standing. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up we have uh, Mr. Lawrence Johnson, a retired educator and band director. Good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure and honor to stand before you today and say that I am a proud of the right person. It is also an honor that this building is being dedicated in honor of Mr. Wade Hamp Prince. This means that he will be memorialized for many years to come, and all of us are extremely happy that this has happened. And with that being said, I would like to say that Mr. Prince also put together a beautiful faculty and staff and these people wanted the very best for us and not only that but mr prince was intelligent was strong no nonsense and also compassionate and believe it or not he and the faculty and staff they tried to show us this every day and with that being said uh, with this dedication today, it even shows us how beautiful things have progressed from many years ago. But not only that, but I'm going to also tell you about some of the events that occurred here, such as basketball games, oratorical contests, spelling bees, band concerts, assembly programs, proms, Boro Wood Booster Club Balls, summer recreation programs, and of course, graduation. I graduated May the 30th, 1968. I guess in a little while, that'll be something like 51 years. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but with that being said, this also makes me think about an event that occurred many years ago now. And I hope my friend, Mr. Edward Hayes, does not mind my telling this story. But one Sunday afternoon, we came down here 
and we got into Virginia. Just the two of us had a basketball. We were just shooting some shots and playing one-on-one, trying some trick shots. We were having a beautiful time. You just couldn't beat it. After a little while, we heard a very loud voice. <laughs> and that was none other than Mr. Prince on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> he ended up telling us, he said, sons, why are you all in here? I could have y'all put in jail. He said, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus. He said, well, we were just playing basketball. And then he said, make sure that you use the mops over the floor, the dust mops over the floor when you finish and make sure you put those dust mops back up. Okay, see y'all later, bye. <laughs> and he left. Now that was the compassionate side of Mr. Prince and we thank the Lord for that. <laughs> but with that being said, Mr. Prince as an individual, principal and leader, he wanted things right, he wanted things in place, he wanted the eyes dotted and the T's crossed. And believe it or not, as I look back over my life, I have tried to live my life with the same attributes as Mr. Prince. And all of us who are here today who are products of Wright High School and faculty and staff, we are extremely happy for this particular dedication. And not only that, but we as the products of Wright High School are still trying to live up to the principles that were instilled in us by this institution. And believe it or not, Mr. Prince, I'm quite sure, will be looking down upon us and proud of us today, hopefully. But with this dedication today and ribbon cutting, this means that this will ensure that this place will continue to be a beacon in this community for many years to come all because of Mr. Wade Hamp Prince, a great man. I thank you. Next we have Ms. Patricia Bundy. Ms. Bundy is the clerk of county council, so she's sort of unofficial. She's going to come share her, her memories. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I consider it a privilege to share this special day with all of you to honor a memory of a dear friend, Wade H. Prince. Mr. Prince was the principal at the old Blenheim Elementary School back in 1975 when I attended. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Most students never wanted to be having dealings with Mr. Prince. If classmates saw you talking to him, it was assumed that you were in trouble, and that was not a good thing. Mr. Prince was always very serious and firm in making sure that all of the students were behaving and in class at the appointed time, and he also made sure that the schools were very clean, always clean. He did not joke around because he had a job to do, and he did it very well. I had an accident at school one day, and Mr. Prince came to my rescue. As I was leaving school, everyone was rushing out of the building, as you might imagine, <laughs> and someone from behind me pushed my arm through the window pane. I did not realize it, but my arm was cut very badly. Mr. Prince ran towards me, and I panicked, thinking I was in trouble because I broke the window pane. <laughs> um, Mr. Prince saw that I needed help, and he wrapped my arm very tight with the towel to stop bleeding. That was probably the first time that I had ever actually spoken to Mr. Prince. <coughs> he was gentle and he was very compassionate. He assured me that everything was going to be okay. He found my older sister at the high school and he took she and myself to the hospital and I received treatment. I always had much respect for Mr. Prince, that, but after that event, it was just like none other. He showed so much kindness and concern. He became not only a principal, but my friend. A statement that is familiar to all of us is surely true about Mr. Prince. That don't make them like that anymore. He was one of the kind. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your comments. It really does give us a, a clear picture of Mr. Prince and the impact he had here, which was great. I did see our sheriff, Charles Lemon, came up. Just want to wave at you there. We tried to recognize everyone. Um, 
and we, we'll move on now to our dedication and ribbon cutting. Uh, of course, after that, we have a reception inside. We want you to come in and check things out. We have uh, initially focused with the renovation of the gymnasium, and you'll see that. It's very nice. And we're now moving into other areas uh, to make it better and better as funds are available. Um, so I think you'll be impressed with what we've done here, and we will continue to do. So at this time, I'd call up Dr. Carolyn Prince and Reverend Eddie Davis for the dedication. Thank you so much. I am so appreciative that so many of you have taken the time today to come out and to help us celebrate the legacy for my father, Wade Hampton Prince. I want to share a few things, a different perspective. First, I'd like to thank the Marlboro County School Board for donating this building to Marlboro County for recreation in this part of the county. So, Chief, you weren't on board, but you followed in the right footsteps. And we've had quite a few different activities here in the building. So we're very grateful for that. And my father taught me to, to dream big. So as Mr. Mullen was saying, we have plans to do more things here in this community, which meant so much to my father. So now, I want to thank the members of County Council who are here and those who are not for voting unanimously to name this facility after my father. Daddy's path as an educator began when he returned home from the Korean War and attended Morris College using the new GI Bill to get an education. He realized that being educated meant a lot back in those days and still even now today. So after teaching for a few years, social studies and coaching, I didn't realize the coaching part, he was appointed principal of Wright School. He went on to get his master's degree from what was then South Carolina State College, and he did some other additional studies. Hamp, as he was called, and you all probably called him Hamp behind his back, but that was okay. He believed that getting an education was a key component and being able to do more for yourself and your family. His mantra was, get as much education as you can. And I added to that, get as much free education as you can. Many of you here today went to school here, graduated from here, or you had family or friends who also attended Wright School. He was so proud of his accomplishments of the students that served or attended school under him. As you know, his last years as principal, he was in failing health. So he would talk about students. They would come visit him. And he just, you know, he was so grateful that many of them went on to colleges and graduate schools, trade schools, serving in the military, raising families, owning businesses, having careers in the medical field, religion, sports, and whatever. Because he knew the value of and education. So let's not forget the faculty and staff. They were like family. In fact, they would come to the house for different things, to visit, to have social uh, occasions, and he taught everybody with respect, and he went to battle for his faculty with the people. Uh, they didn't have a district office. They had area superintendents who managed the schools, and he ruffled a lot of feathers, but he always got what he wanted for his teachers. So now, there are a lot of teachers who couldn't be here today for different reasons. Mrs. Hattie Foster, Mr. James David, excuse me, Mr. James Jacobs, Mr. Ronald Hennigan, Mr. Richard Nix Dixon, Ms. Louise David, and Mr. John Willie David. Some have health concerns, others are traveling or have other prior commitments. So through the years, whenever people would run into me, they'd always tell me something about my father and what he did for this community that I had no idea. But that was all okay, because it made me proud. And everybody would say, except a few people, you look like your daddy. So a lot of times I didn't have to introduce myself. They said, aren't you Carolyn? Aren't you Mr. Prince's daughter? I was proud of him. My mother and I shared his time with you, his second family but it didn't bother us. He had enough love to go around for everybody. 
he was here sometimes more than he was at home. Each of you have shared memories as you spoke, and those in the audience, I'm sure you have the stories to make us laugh or to be happy because of what my father did in this community. So another side of him, some things you haven't heard, I realized that everybody got a hot, full, tasty lunchtime every day, seconds if you wanted it, extra biscuits. <laughs> so you young folks are missing out because back in the day we had real cooks and real, real good food. So just some little things like that. My father loved cars and he would, he and Mr. Rick McLeod Sr. would go out, there was a new car coming out, they go get one. Different color, same model, same year. They drive them around for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, go back and get another car. Sometimes my mother and I thought we had company pulling up in the driveway because daddy would get out of the car that he didn't leave home in that morning. So that was his passion. And helping people. He would give you the shirt off his back. He go If he saw a child that needed a coat, shoes or whatever, he'd go get it. It didn't matter. If there was a family in need, they got what they needed. It didn't matter. Blenheim was his home. My ties here, I started first grade at <clears throat> five years old. Go <laughs> 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 so, oh, get better with age. Because there was nobody to keep me. The lady that was keeping me my early years, my uncle, and I'm telling on your daddy, Dee Dee, <laughs> he made her go to work. So daddy put me in the car, brought me to school. So you know what time he would get here, so you know what time I had to get up. I probably slept all the way down that two-lane road to get from Bennisville down to Blenheim. But it didn't matter. And the other things that he did, like making sure that every away game, football, basketball, he went to those games. He would ride the bus home, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever it took to deliver every single student back to their home safe and sound, the little things. And then he'd be the first one here the next morning and greeting every student by hand. So one other thing that, that I can't figure out, Daddy had a little car called a Renault. Okay, I want some answers. <laughs> so some of the football players, I guess, played a trick on him. I don't know where he was, they picked up the car and took it around the building. <laughs> you know he had a fit when he couldn't find his car. So I don't know if he ever found out, but he never told, but I don't know either who did it. So if anybody wanna to confess to me later, they can. <laughs> so now, children, their parents, the community is what mattered to daddy. And you've heard people speak from personal experiences the kinds of values that he instilled in us and that hopefully we're passing on to our children. So he did the same for me. People thought he spoiled me terribly. My mother saw to it that he didn't do that. She would send me to get my own switch. Y'all know what a switch is? Yes. He never did, he never spanked me, but mama tore up these legs. But anyway, Remember, children model what they see in their parents and other adults. So my father instilled in me kindness, service, strong moral and ethical values to help others and to get as much education as you can. He also said keeping your word and having a good reputation was worth more than money. If he were here today, Wade Hampton Prince would be so proud to be honored by having this building named for him in recognition of his service, which was a labor of love. Serve is what he did. He didn't know any other way. He never met a stranger. So to the faculty, staff, students, and the entire Blenheim community, we were happy to share Wade Hampton Prince with you. I'm grateful that this building is being named for him and that his legacy of service will continue for many years to come. For that, I thank you. 
Now we realize this is an old building, but back in the day they built them well, okay? It's used quite a bit, and we have grand plans for having even more events here in the building. There are some things that we need to do. We need to spruce up the locker room and the bathrooms and some of the other rooms so they'll have some uses. And for that, we need a little money. We need to help the county pay for these kinds of things. So I'm asking, not today or whenever you can, whenever it moves your heart, to make a donation to the Wade Hampton Prince Renovation Fund, payable to the county. It's earmarked for that. And organizations, churches, friends, family, or anyone who has a heart that wants to see us improve the building. So again, I thank you for honoring my father and for coming out today to help us celebrate this event. We will sing a song in honor of uh, Prince and then we will pray a prayer of dedication to say our grace and then we will have our giving cup. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with the word. Eternal God of blessing, Father, we are so grateful and thankful for this beautiful spring day. We're grateful and thankful for life, health, and strength, and that things are as well as they are. And we ask that you forgive us for our sins and wash us over again because we want our lives, we want this prayer to be acceptable in your sight because you are our strength and our redeemer. And so now, Father, we dedicate this building back to you in remembrance of Wade H. Prince. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for his love, his dedication, his commitment. We thank you for his love for you and for your people. And now, Father, in the spirit that he served in, may this building 
be served in the same manner. May people that work here show love, show compassion, show understanding, show someone in the right, point someone in the right direction. And so, Father, I thank you now for their willingness and their commitment. And, Father, as he changed lives, may everyone that comes through these doors, may their lives never, ever be the same. So, Father, I thank you now for our county administrator, our county council, and I thank you for their vision. And I pray that you continue to bless them, strengthen them, and empower them to do what you call them to do. And that is be a blessing to Marlboro County. We thank you for it now. We thank you for this food that we're about to receive, for the nourishment of our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared it, the love that went into it. In the name of the Christ Jesus, I ask it all. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. At this time, we'd ask those that, that had remarks to come up and let's unveil the portrait and make a photo. And then we'll do the ribbon cutting. So if, if you made some remarks, come on up here and we'll uh, make a photo and then we'll do the ribbon and everyone can get behind that and we'll make another photo. Thank you. 